So hi guys, welcome to today's video. So today, the date is actually August 27. It's currently 2.59 a.m. by the time I'm filming this. And I'm gonna edit it quickly and then I'm gonna pause it tonight at 6 p.m. So if you're watching this video, that means I was able to edit it fast. As you can read from the title, this video is a TikTok archive, meaning I'm gonna be sharing with you a compilation of TikTok videos that I already posted in my TikTok account. Because the video that I was supposed to upload today, which is this how I pass, how my friends and I pass the qualifying exams, this little documentary, I am not yet able to finish it because I think I overestimated myself. I thought I'm gonna finish editing it in a week but then I forgot that I have this one month worth of clips from our qualifying preparations. So I wanted to include all of those clips and unfortunately I am not able to finish the video yet. I'm actually still editing it. Hopefully it will be up next week but if not, I don't know what else will I post, okay? So please bear with me because I'm trying my best to be consistent with posting. So the reason you click on this video is probably because you want to know why my attempt to shift from BS accountancy to BS in management account was a failure because I wasn't able to shift and in this video you will know why so it actually started when I posted this video basically I was just following this trend wherein you will share something that people cannot use to hurt you so in this video I share that you cannot hurt me because I am a student who struggled in ABM strand in senior high but still I agreed to enroll in BSA or BS in accountancy in that trend I said that I don't think there will be something worse that could hurt me. Basically, that's a TikTok trend. I mean, that TikTok trend kind of went, I cannot say it's viral, but kind of reached a lot of people and they began asking me some questions. And here's some of the questions that I received and here's how I answered to them. Okay, hi everyone. I'm gonna answer this question. <laughs> For a vlogger, I charge subscribe to my YouTube. Can I ask if choosing accountancy is being practical? Yes, because as one of the comments mentioned, um, if you're an accountancy student and you take up the board and you pass the board and you become a CPA or a certified public accountant, there are lots of like doors of op opportunities that will open for you. Um, and I've read once that um, one of the highest paying jobs is certified public accountants but I also read a comment that they're mostly underpaid underpaid in the Philippines so I know about that but my decision is final I am gonna shift to BSMA or Bachelor in Science and Management Accounting it's like accountancy but without the board so you do you Ria yeah you do you good luck and pray hard <laughs> um Okay, so one of my seniors or um, my schoolmate from a higher level actually specifically told me that if I'm planning to take law in the future, make sure to take up accountancy as pre-law. She specifically said accountancy and not policy, which is what usually the pre-law courses of most of my, most of the people I know, their pre-law courses is are policy. But my senior told me, go for accountancy. It's probably because accountancy, there are law subjects. We actually have three law subjects in accountancy. First is the obligation, the obligations and contracts. Second is the law of sales. Third is the law on partnerships and corporations. Oh, we also have other laws like bank laws, PDIC laws, and a lot more. So yes, it's a good pre-law course. Okay, guys, yes, I really agree with this comment. No social life if you're an accountancy student. So, and actually, this probably, this is, this comment is also applicable to many degree programs, but I'm speaking in behalf of accountancy students because I am one for now. Accountancy. Okay, so this is my calendar for 2022. Okay, it starts at February because January is. Um, Typhoon Odette. I'm from Cebu. If you don't know that, yeah, you don't, you probably don't know that because you don't know me. But it started February, and look, um, 
it's very full especially March <laughs> look oh my gosh this is my calendar guys then we have April oh, I only have the Holy Week break next we have May May look at May I don't have Saturdays then June oh, I had my finally I had my summer two weeks two weeks of summer and then July which is July this month right oh July it's also cold but not so much as March March was the busiest yet so I only have one two three four days in July I mean we only have four days in July and no rest days even at saturdays and sundays so good luck yes good luck after answering there's this one question that really caught me nobody really wants to ask me this question because people think that i actually do not want to do it like i cannot dare to do it actually i already made up my mind so the question is reasons why i want to shift so here i explained i actually shared this little table that i made from my notes app containing the reasons why i wanted to shift so here are the reasons why i wanted to shift so a lot of people are asking me about this lots of comments but i'm gonna answer it in one video hopefully because i don't like part one part two but yes okay so this is not an overnight decision i did not decide to wake up one day and just shift it's three years in the making so i'm a third year student now and if you do the math yes i've been planning to shift since first year and here's why i made a table for this because why not so these are the pros and cons of staying in bsa and shifting to bsma bsma again is a management accounting it's like accountancy but without the board because the board in bsma is international it's only available outside the philippines the cma board first pros is a cpa title of course who wouldn't want a cpa title oh my gosh ronabiel behok cpa Ooh. And if you get the CPA title, again, you'll have lots more opportunities, especially when you start working. Then, mahuman na subdan, finish what I started. I think it's nice to put like you have a full circle in your life. Now, you started accountancy, you graduate in accountancy, but it's not, it's not practical for me already. Third, makaingon po tag bright judan. Yeah, we can really say that you're smart because there's this stereotype that if you're accountancy student, wow, you're so smart. But no we're just pretending and then last pros of staying because if i become a cpa um then i wouldn't have to take law i think i will just take masters but that's still undecided cons mental health not good no there's always stress anxiety and pressure and when i take my exams i'm always shaking and i'm not exaggerating and it's not only because of the coffee. Sometimes even when I don't drink coffee, I shake during exams. Next, mabuo na kuhapit. Yes. I'm almost losing my mind. Anyways, that's for another story time. Next, dili confidence of face-to-face -face because our school announced that next school year, we will have a high flex or probably full face-to-face. -face. And for sh I'm not really confident with the subjects of the fourth year in BSA in my school so i don't want to retake a subject so never mind do guys graduate because in my school if you're a bsc student you will graduate around like october yes uh, as compared to bsma they will we will we could graduate at july so a lot earlier my napai integ integrated is a fifth year subject <sighs> we have four years <gasps> i need more time see you in part two bye i don't want to do part two but there's no more time i talk a lot okay bye okay hi guys this is the part two of why i decided to shift 
when I am almost in my last year of college. But let me explain, okay? So I think I last left off here in Napay Integ, one of the cons for staying in BSA. Um, Integ means integrated subjects. In my school, the BSA program is four and a half years. Meaning the first four years, you have two semesters each. each and for my fifth year, I only have one semester. And in this one semester, the subjects that are offered are integrated subjects, so INTEG. Uh, meaning, these are like similar subjects since first year to fourth year, but this time, it's more comprehensive, integrated, more advanced. And I just could, couldn't do that, okay? Um, I want to graduate already. And um, last cons here is competitive classmates maka-intimidate somewhat. They're intimidating. Um, this, I don't want this to sound like uh, I I'm not supportive. I don't support healthy competition. I actually look up to these people. They're really smart But it's a con for me because being surrounded with people who actually want it while I don't add, Just adds up to the pressure um, As if you don't know yet or if you knew but you probably don't because you don't know me um I did not choose the BSA program for myself. It was a parent's decision and I just agreed to it because why not? Opportunities, right? If you become a CPA, lots of opportunities. But now, I just couldn't do it anymore so I'm shifting to BSMA. And BSMA again is a management accounting subject. It's like the BSA program but without the board because the board is not available here in the Philippines. It's an international board exam. One of the pros of BSA MA if I shift these are actually like some of the responses I got there, gathered from my friends who shifted from BSA as well to BSMA last school year so this is what they told me first the pros is less stress it doesn't mean that it's not hard anymore it's still hard I think all degree programs are at some point but it's more bearable like than as compared to BSA, so less stress, gamay na lang kuwang na subjects. Yes, because in BSMA, um, I will only like need 12 subjects before I graduate. I need to check that, out, check that out again. But a lot of people are confused and they think that I'm shifting, that if I shift, I will go back to first year. Actually, no. If you are from BSA program, at least in my school, you can shift to BSMA and you will still retain your year level. For example, I'm a third year student now and I if, if I shift to BSMA, I will still be a third year student but I will need to overload some subjects that were not offered in BSMA that are part of BSMA. Hi everyone, this is part 3 of why I'm going to shift. Not that a lot of you care but I'm gonna share. So last, in part 2, I last left off saying that even though I'm gonna shift from BSA to BSMA or Management Accounting, I will not go back to being a first-year student. I am gonna retain my year level. So this upcoming new school year, I am gonna be a fourth-year Management Accounting student. So to continue, again, if I stay in BSMA, I will graduate earlier because the years in BSMA program is only four years unlike BSA, which is four and a half years in my school. Next, as na kung this is what some of my friends who already shifted told me. Um, they're getting more sleep than they had when they stayed in BSA. Why NTEC? There is no integrated subjects anymore because we don't have a fifth year in BSMA. Next, what na quality? No quality or no retention exams already in BSMA. Unlike in BSA, there are qualifying exams or retention exams and when you fail once, you cannot continue the program already. The department will ask you to shift to another um, program or like here, BSMA. Um, I'm about to take, I'm still, even though I'm gonna shift to BSMA, I'm still gonna take the qualifying which is this coming August 3 to 4. But I've, I've already 100% decided that I will not continue Pass, I will, will I pass or not? I will not continue even if I pass. Okay, so goodbye BSA. Next, um, makayera ang face to face. I think this is my own opinion. Um, when I look up the prospectus for the BSMA, I think I can handle the subjects. I think it's more bearable for me as compared with BSA subjects. So I I need that. Okay, because 
mental health, not good. Next, cons. Of course, there are cons in BSMA. Matawag na BSA dropout. Because it's a common stereotype that if you shifted, if you're an accountancy student, if you're a BSA student and you shifted to another program, they will tell you that, ah, oh, BSA dropout, ah, oh, kaya mo na siya bright or something. But, Please stop because no, not everyone who graduated in BSA, I think, were successful immediately and not everyone who graduated in BS BSME are not successful. It depends on how you can handle the program, but that's the common stereotype, especially in my school. Anyways, next, international on board. Yes, I think it. you have to play, pay more, I guess. There are lots more expenses because the board in BSME is international. It's not available yet in the Philippines. And I have no time again. Oh my gosh. Last video. Last part for later. Hey guys, finally, last part. I promise. Um, I don't know why. Big deal kayo nga. Ah, mashave ko. Daghandig video. Anyways, to continue, one of the cons of being an FBSMA is that the board is international. It's not available yet in the Philippines. So if you want to become a CMA, not a CPA, that's for the BSA. If you want to become a CMA, you, need, you will need to go like abroad and take the board, which cost a lot because of course passport visa and everything next sayan food ang nasudan yes it's very like sayang lang na you won't be able to continue what you started but masayang if sabaw kang di na good para ni mo imo pang ipadayon so di na siya nako i-force akong self next field expectations of course this is my personal opinion Ako, I'm a Dean's Lister, consistent Dean's Lister since first year to third year. So, not everyone who shifted from BSA to BSMA or guys are those nga tapulan or lazy kay mo study. Dili, dili gyu, dili gyu na pasabot nga tapulan mi mo study. Kanahan na jun mi mo shift because the mental health jud grabe. Sa BS grabe gyud siya, maka drain gyud siya. Okay, so. Field expectations, especially to, from my parents. They expect a lot from me. Ah, you graduated first in junior high, first in senior high. So, of course, you should finish BSA. But no, I cannot. And they have to understand that I cannot. I don't want also. So, next, dili maka take CPA board unless kuhag kuha nga units. So, it doesn't mean, guys, that if you're from BSA and you shift to BSMA, you cannot take the board already. You can still take the board if, after you graduate BSMA, you are gonna take up the lacking units for BSA and take the board. So, take, I don't know how many units, 18, probably, I don't know. But you can take your lacking units in a different school probably because it's not allowed in my school so for example i could take uh, the lacking units in usc if i'm from usgr and i can and if i graduate or finish the 18 units or i don't know how many units if i can finish the lacking units then i will be able to take my cpa the cpa board so my whole it will it will mean that i will have a double degree if I do this so I have a degree in BSMA and I could also have a degree in BSA if I take the lacking units so that's it guys hopefully my videos do not discourage you if you want to BSA if you really want the BSA program please go for it this is my opinion I took a lot of time thinking about this hopefully it will not discourage you if you really want it go for it survive lang mo guys good luck bye and after that, I received more questions and I answered them basically. It's more about shifting and etc. Difference between subjects of accountancy and management accounting. So just watch the clips. Okay, this is not a part 3 of why I'm shifting to another degree program and I'm in my last, almost last year in college. But I want to answer this question. No, this is not support ng shift ko. They are not supportive of me shifting to another program. Because one, they chose this, and of course, they want me to finish this. And two, they think so highly of me. They think that I'm really so smart, that I'm just overreacting, probably being over dramatic, that I cannot finish this degree. But I am not. If they want a daughter who is alive and healthy, then they have to support me because the program is already not good for my mental health. Um, congrats to. My, some of my schoolmates who can stay, who can bear it for another one and a half year, but I couldn't.
So I'm choosing this for my mental health and this is also my way of like trying to pave my own way like trying to decide on my own finally i have something to say about my life and also um in return so that they won't be too sad because i'm not that bad of a daughter um, i promise them that i will take up law and pass the bar hopefully and become a lawyer so yes they don't support it but they have to <laughs> Oh my gosh, so this is the reason why I was very afraid making these videos because I don't want to discourage anyone. This isn't the point of my videos. I'm literally just telling you what I experienced myself because back when I was in first year, when I was enrolling to accountancy, I had zero knowledge what accountancy is. I had like complete zero. I didn't know there were law subjects. I didn't know that we have retention exams. I just knew that the cutoff in our school for BSA is two. Two guys. So that's all I knew. And if someone told me when I was in first year, ah, this is accountancy, this is what you'll do, this is what you have to expect, I probably won't have considered it. So please don't be discouraged. There are lots of factors that could affect this. For example, in my school, the retention if you want to stay in BSA, you need to have at least two, two grades, like two. That's the cutoff rate in our school. For ex um, in my school, we have until level three qualifying exams, so we can, we should take qualifying exams three times. In my school, I have again four and a half years. We have a fifth year first semester with integrated subjects. What else? So there are lots of factors to consider, guys. Um, it's different for every school. Please, oh my gosh, please don't be discouraged. That's not the point of my videos. Laban lang you guys, study. Oh, if you want tips about accountancy, go to my YouTube. I have lots of videos about it. I do study and productivity vlogs on YouTube. So all I can say, just pray and um, find the right circle of friends. And take care of your mental health. So, yes, goodbye. <laughs> guys hello okay let me answer this question actually the subjects offered in bsa and bsma are the same from first year to second year the minors uh, the minor subject still the same but it starts to differ in third year because there are major subjects offered in ma and different major subjects offered in bsa so no worries from first year to second year still the same at least huh, this is from my school, BSA and BSMA, same subjects, uh, different starting third year to fourth year. In fourth year, as you can see, if I shift to BSMA, the subjects, this will, I will only have to take these subjects and for my second sem, no subjects anymore. All I have to do is internship and research. So please pause to read. Hopefully, you can see clearly this is the only copy I have. I asked this from my BSA friend, I mean BSMA friend. BSMA friend who shifted from BSA also. So BSA to BSMA friend. So please pause to read. Okay, so yeah, that's it. Um, as you can see, no more fifth year in this prospectus. This is the prospectus from my school. So it may be different to you. But same minor subjects for BSMA and BSA. Major subjects differ. Okay, bye! Actually, guys, I was told that there is already a CMA here in the Philippines, but I wasn't sure of that yet. But I received this message. It's still in my message request because I don't know what to respond. Last Thursday, last week, um, it states here, Hello, Rona. Good afternoon. This is from Belle from Inside CMA Review. I was merely curious as to whether you're, you intend to sit for the CMA exam by January. But I wasn't sure if what she meant by sit in exam like do i have to go abroad so i still have to respond thank you for reminding me i still have to respond to this message i'm gonna update you soon but yes so i think cma is already available here in the philippines oh if that's the case then i don't think i'm gonna pursue the lucky units for bsa to take the cpa board i'm just gonna take the cma board 
So thank you so much for seeing this. Bye! Actually guys, all the clips that you just saw are clips that I filmed a week before my qualifying exams. You can tell from the clips that I was actually already very decided. Like, I felt this relief already to shift because I already made up my mind and I had my reasons. Unfortunately, the day of the quali came. I was actually very relaxed when I took the quali. So I even filmed these TikTok videos. So these are the TikToks that I film on the day of the qualifying exam. So as you can see, it's just me making this transition of the night before qualifying, then my ride towards school to take the face-to-face -face qualifying, me on site taking the qualifying exams, and me leaving school thinking that I flunked it or like I failed it. I was very relaxed. I already accepted the results even though there are no results yet. So just to give you an overview, our qualifying exams was held on August 3 and August 4. It was a two-day exams and the results came out in afternoon of August 5. The morning of August 5, I actually felt nothing. I don't know. I wasn't nervous at all. I didn't even plan on even looking at the results of the qualifying exams. All I did was film TikToks. I was very active on TikTok, so I actually did this little dance, answered more questions related to accountancy because a lot of people were curious. And then the results came. My friends and I opened the results and it took me hours to process how I felt. Of course, I wasn't really happy because again, in my mind, I already accepted that I'm shifting. But since I passed the qualifying examinations, my mother will not let me shift anymore. So, my mother will want me to continue. Of course, I have to continue. I don't have a choice because I'm not the one paying for my school. How I cope? Well, I cope by making TikTok videos. And these are the TikTok videos I made. So basically, I made, I use jokes to to cope up with the results of the qualifying exams. Also, more questions related to accountancy was thrown at me. A lot of a lot of the people from my TikTok, a lot of comments were asking questions related to qualifying exams or the accountancy program itself. So I answered the questions. Hi guys. <laughs> Sorry for my voice. I just finished crying. But let me make a video about this because I want to talk to someone. Um, actually, a lot of my friends have told me the same thing already. I'm the only person in my batch probably that is not happy about me passing my qualifying exams. Because if you watch my previous videos here in TikTok, I've already decided. Like, I woke up today feeling relieved because I know that deep in me, deep inside me, I know I'm gonna fail it because during the exams, I wasn't confident with my answers. I did not took it seriously, but I guess the universe had other plans or maybe the universe is just trying to in Bisaya, gisungog pako sa world. The universe is teasing me. And another irony, the most ironic about all this is my password. We have to type in this username and password before we receive our qualifying results. And this is my password. So this is my password. Your plan, not mine. I guess God's plan before mine. So, Lord, if you really want me to stay in this degree program, Please help me save my mental health. Please don't make me crazy. Okay, bye. Hi guys, so let's talk about qualifying examinations. So in my school, there are three levels of qualifying examinations. If you fail level 1, you cannot proceed in level 2. If you fail level 2, you cannot proceed in level 3. Level 1, you're going to, you're going to take before enrolling for third year in college and the subjects here are the financial accounting and reporting or the FAR and the RFBT or law subjects. RFBT meaning regulatory framework for business transactions. So it's the law subjects, law on sales, law on obligations and contracts, law on partnerships and corporations, and etc. 
Um, in level 2, the one I just took and the one I just passed, we have to take three exams. First, we have the um, auditing theory. Second, we have the mass or the management accounting subjects. Then, we have the taxation. So, taxation, including income taxation, business and transition. I mean, income taxation, business taxes, uh, transfer taxes, estate donors, and etc. For level 3, I'm still about to take because I'm staying in DSA. The subjects offered, there are two. We have the advanced financial reporting, financial accounting, and reporting, which is the AFAR. And the other one is the auditing problem. So in level 2, auditing theories. In level 3, auditing problems. So I hope that answers your question. If you have more questions, tell me because I need to talk to someone. Ha! Or I might go crazy. And as for the second question, I almost forgot. Um, no, we don't have reviewers. We don't have like the um, hard copy reviewers. But we had review sessions which we actually paid for. Our chairman also managed to invite like big names in accountancy who help us with our review sessions it lasted for a week actually um i think you might be familiar with some of the names we have sir brian sir Suleiman. i need to double check that but yes um those famous names i think it's sir ocampo those famous names that you find in your reviewers um we actually met them we had review sessions through zoom meetings so that lasted for a week but for our taxation, our chairman of our department um, gave us the review himself. So yes, that's it. Hi guys, I'm going to answer this question based on my experience and based on the school that I'm into. So in the school that I'm into, again, there are five years in accountancy. Four and a half years. First four years, we have two semesters each. In our fifth year of college, we only have one semester each. So, um, the QE or the qualifying examination starts before our second year. That's level one. Then, before fourth year, which the one that I just took, which is level two. And before fifth year, which is level three. So, all in all, we have three levels of qualifying examinations. Then, the next question, do you, are we, if we shift to another degree program, do we go back to being a first year student? depends on what course or i mean degree program you're going to shift to so for example if i am a bsa and i'm gonna shift to bsma during my third year of college then i will still be a third year student if i shift however if you shift to another degree program especially one that is totally un unrelated to accountancy then i think you really need to go back to your first year of a college for example if bsa to what like psychology but again still depends on the school but i'm speaking behalf of my school so yes i hope that answers the question okay hi guys so let's change it up a bit and let me tell you encouraging things about being a bsa or an accountancy student so Okay, let's try again. Okay, um. Okay, so I thought of one. <laughs> one. So, um, if you're an accountancy student, we have lots of law subjects. On um, during my first year, first sem, we have law of obligations and contracts. For second sem, we have law on partnerships and obligations. Third sem, I mean second year, first sem, we have law on sales. Then on my third year second sem, we had other laws like um, bank laws, bank laws, and etc. So I think BSA is a really good pre-law degree program because it already exposes you to like law subjects, and you'll be um, at least more confident during oral recitations because you do it a lot in your law subjects and you have lots of case digest also so that's one good thing about accountancy especially if you want to proceed to law school so let me think of more okay 
oh yeah, opportunities. I mentioned it already. There are lots of opportunities in BSA, especially if you're a ECPA um CPA in the future if you're a licensed accountant already. Yes, let me think of more. Also, let me tell you the bond that I had with my friends became much more stronger because <laughs> you feel a lot in accountancy, like you feel exams a lot in accountancy and um when my friends and I feel an exam we just laugh it off because there's no need to cry about it because there are more exams to focus on so yeah i guess with bsa i think we got closer with my friends <laughs> okay let me think of more also guys um i think another encouraging post is probably if i tell you my if i share to you my study habits but i already made a whole video about it in my youtube channel so you can watch it i provided their tips on how i study like pomodoro techniques and etc i also made a video on how i start studying when i don't feel like it so my just go to my youtube channel i swear um there are videos that are actually helpful and i make a lot of study vlogs so you might as well study with me okay bye Okay, so the question here is, if you're a BSMA graduate, can you still proceed and go back to BSA? The answer is yes. For example, I am a BSMA graduate. I already have a degree in management accounting, but I want to take the CPA board. So what I can do is I can take up the remaining units or the lacking subjects for BSA so that when I pass it, if I can pass those remaining units, I can have my degree in accountancy and I can take up the CPA board. So that means I will have a double degree. I will have a degree on management accounting. I will also have my degree on accountancy. So yeah, it's still possible. Guys, it's not the end of the world if you're a BSMA student. Yeah, um, there's still lots of opportunities in BSMA. But if you really want to become a CPA, of course, go for it. I'll take up the remaining units. Laban lang mo, guys. Hey, guys. I'm so glad someone asked this because there's this stereotype that if you're from BSA and you shift into BSME, you will have, like, less opportunities, whatever. But no, that's not real. Okay, let us continue. Let us answer this question. What are the job opportunities for BSME? Now, I screenshotted these pictures from our official page in the university. Hopefully, it will help. But let us talk about BSMA first. What is BSMA? BSMA is Bachelor in Science and Management Accounting. This program provides students with the competen competencies and values required of professional accountants in the workplace. So workplace, internal. Particularly in the area of management advisory services. So again, uh, when we speak of BSMA, it's more on the managerial inside. Being a no board program, there is no CPA board here. This no longer includes the integrated review subjects included for the CPA licensure exams because in BSA, in our school, we have fifth year and in fifth year, we have integrated subjects. But if you're a BSMA, then there's no need for the integrated subjects and there's no need for the fifth year. So we have first the entry level jobs. So first, um, there are four, um, how do you say this, scope in accountancy practice or in the accountancy profession. We have the public practice, we have the commerce or the industry, we have the government, and we have the um, academe. So here are the entry-level positions. Screenshot it, guys, okay? Uh, I'm gonna move, okay? Go, screenshot. We have public practice, audit staff, tax staff, etc. Commerce and industry, you can be a financial accountant. Or a reporting staff, government. You can work in the LG as an LGU accountant, etc. Education. You can work as a junior accounting instructor. And here is for the middle entry and for the. Let me just show you. So the middle level positions and the advanced positions. So, screenshot. Okay, screenshot, screenshot. Okay, and if there's any more, if. I can help you with anything my god just tell me so yeah okay so that's it that's the job opportunity the careers available for bsme thanks and i hope you and i answered your question hmm.
And I think that's it for now for my TikTok archive. Hopefully, you will understand why all I can give you for this video or TikTok archives because I'm still working on this little documentary about how my friends and I prepared qualifying exams and how we pass it. So yes. So if you want to watch more of my TikTok videos, then follow my TikTok. I don't really ask people to follow my TikTok because my TikTok is like a dump account where I just post random stuff. I rant on TikTok. I twerk on TikTok. For now, goodbye. And it's currently 3.15. I'm gonna sleep now and edit as soon as I wake up fast. So if you want to follow my accountancy journey, a very, very interesting accountancy journey, um, I'm not asking you to follow my TikTok because I'm ashamed of the content I post there. <laughs> Instead, why not subscribe to my YouTube? I put a lot of effort on my YouTube videos, so I hope you appreciate them. It's 3.20. I have to go. Bye.